Greetings, greetings, greetings once again, my sports to the bone family. Back at it, back at it, you know, my viewers and subscribers. Thank you all for checking this video out. Yeah, man. So, a couple of things I want to talk about in this one. We're going to take a look at the composition of this ODI team and how they probably can fit the pieces together to make sure that we put up a good fight against the Indians. Also, we're going to be talking, um, sharing some thoughts from Fazir Mohammed. He was recently on the Sports Max show and he was talking about the West Indies test team and how they need to try and um, implement certain things to start winning games. So just give a listening ear and let me know what you think in the comment section. All right, so we'll kick things off with Fazir Mohammed talking about the test team and then we'll just transition into the ODI squad. So Fazir was speaking about the test team and he was saying that, you know, goes without saying, whenever you're playing cricket, you should be playing to win. Especially in a test match, you know, you don't know if, or when the rain, if and when the rain is going to fall. You should always be batting or you know, bowling with intent, you know, to try and win the game. It shouldn't, always, it shouldn't be about just trying to survive. You understand, it sh you, know, you should be putting yourself in a position to win the game if, it, if, if rain doesn't interrupt and things. So, you know, so that, that, that is what he was saying. He was also saying that um, first things first, you have to be, you know, in order to play with certain amount of intent, you have to be comfortable with your own game. You have to be competent enough. So when we're saying that we want the guys to play positive cricket, we want them to go up. Not necessarily go at the bowling, but to try and um, you know make sure that they are putting the bowlers under pressure. According to Fazir Mohammed, the only way to do that is if you are competent and you are confident enough to make sure that you know in Test cricket, if you are not confident, the first and only thing is going to be in your mind is to try and survive. And you know until you get to a level where you are confident and competent enough to to put back some pressure on the opponent to basically make sure that you are rotating the strike. It's always going to be a case of you not um, really winning games, but probably just drawing games and winning the odd one and two there, here and there. You know, so that is what he was saying. Um, he, he was also talking about the, the, the England. He was asked about the England team and how they are playing on the front foot. You know, looking to looking um, to, to, to always score and, and, and thing. You know, he was saying that it's, it's two different teams. It's two different teams and two different set of players. You know, saying that there's a whole lot of thing, go, um, things that go into play like that. First, you need um, the captain and the coach to be on the same wavelength as it relates to wanting to play that brand of cricket. If you look at Ben Stokes and Brendan McCallum, for those who would have seen his career, you know, they are the same sort of, sort of players, you know, you understand. So, if you look at Craig Brathwaite now, you, you know, this man is a defensive player. And, and uh, Andre Coley just coming into the job is probably going to try and settle and go the safest route. So, you know, Fazir was just um, speaking on this and saying, listen, it's all good and well to say go out there and play a certain brand of cricket. He also raised the point that, you know, if we should, if the player should go out there and look to be positive and the coach say, listen, whatever it is, the coach and the captain say, listen, whatever it is, Go and play, express yourself, play this way. If you get out, we will back you just the same. You won't be dropped for this. Go and play. He's saying that if we try something like that and we get steamrolled in the, in, 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 in the couple of games, then that's going to be a major problem. He also alluded to the fact that a team like England that will play a series of four test matches, five test matches, you know, they can afford to do these sort of things. Because if they go like that in the first two or so games, you know, they can know how to adjust if it's not working. But a team like West Indies that we only get two test matches, um, you know, say for example, now we just play these two test matches. We're not playing again till we are uh, uh, January when we go up against Australia. So there's not a lot of time for the players to come up and to, 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 to learn this sort of style, to, you know, so they, they, they basically just in the rhythm that they are used to, in the rhythm that they are used to because there's not enough time. Um, where Test Cricket is concerned for them to play. Um, he also spoke about uh, Kurt McKenzie and Alec Arthanis, you know, saying that they are two youngsters just coming in the team and um, they are not going to get an opportunity to really settle down and play the amount of cricket that, that, that we would want them to play so that they can develop a certain style. 
you understand they, they, they have to play enough cricket to, to be able to, 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 to be comfortable and confident enough to take on world class bowling like um like like what you see some of the other guys are doing you know um so th so those are some of the things he was talking about you know we, we 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 often talk about the massive gap um between we often talk about the massive gap between the two team between a, a team like a well not, not even a team we often talk about the massive gap when we play no we're not going to play until january again you understand so that is that is a problem there so you know the youngsters don't the youngsters don't get an opportunity to really go out there and, 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 and show their words. So I just wanted to bring that across to you all. So you know just let me know what you all think about what Fazir is saying there. Alright. So quickly just to take a look at the West Indies ODI squad. So just to remind you, we have Shea Hope and Ravman Powell, Captain and Vice Captain respectively. We have Alec Arthanes, Yannick Karia, Casey Carty. Dominic Drakes, Shimran Hitmeyer, Alzari Joseph, Brandon King, Kyle Mears, Goody Kishmoti is also there. Goody Kishmoti is also there. Um, Jaden Seals, Romara Shepard, Kevin Sinclair, and O'Shane Thomas. So I just wanted to highlight the fact that as it relates to spin, I think we have that covered. Uh, we still don't know why, why, why Akil Hussein isn't in the team. Um, Ovi, I think he has been dropped because no mention was made, you know, they, they didn't say that he's unavailable or anything, so apparently they, they, they decided to leave him out. But in terms of the batting, I can see the batting coming together. Uh, my only issue is that, you know, Nicholas Poor who is in form isn't there. So in terms of the batting unit, you, you, you can see a Shimran Hitmeyer, a Brandon King, a Shea Hope, you understand, a Kyle Mayers and, 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 um, uh, Alec Arthur is on a Casey Carty. You can see these guys forming the core. You know, the vice captain is also there, Ravman Powell. You can see these guys forming the core of the batting to make sure that the foundation is laid. And, um, you know, we, we not saying that we're going to beat Indiana, but you can, you can see the thought process, you understand, in, as it relates to picking the um, certain, certain players. My only thing is, you know, we have three spinners in the squad. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure if we really and truly need um, so many spinners. You understand? We have Yannick Karaya, who, who is the leg spinner for the team. We have um, we have uh, Goody Kishmoti, who is just returning, and Akil and uh, Kevin Sinclair. So more than likely, two will play and one will be there just in case. So I can understand that. In terms of the pace bowlers now, Jaden Seals is recovering, uh, is, is in the squad. You understand? Don't know if it is Oshin Thomas um, is there. Dominic Drakes is there. And if 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 Kyle Mears is playing, you expect him to bowl a few overs. Romara Shepard is also there. Um, Alzari Joseph. So I am I am probably only worried about the pace bowling department. I mean Alzari, as we know, is our frontline bowler, especially in ODI cricket. So we are hoping that things will be good for him. He will be fit. Uh, Ocean Thomas is just coming back, so we don't know how fit he is. Same thing with Jaden Seals. Obviously, they would have seen them in camp. You understand? So we don't know. Um, I, I, I would probably be be a little bit more comfortable with a Jair McAllister in the squad, in the actual squad, and, and even if if not even Akim Jordan. You understand? A, a Jair McAllister, um, just 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 to make sure, but. I don't have a lot of faults with this squad. Just as I see most people saying, there's not a lot of faults with this squad. I, I, I'm just really, you know, sorry that Nicholas Puran isn't there. Jason Ola isn't there. I don't really think we're going to miss him because we have a couple of other all-rounders there. But, you know, we're really going to miss the batting of Nicholas Puran. So, as it relates to the squad coming together, it's not a bad look. But as I said, once, once we get an, a, an opportunity, we're going to have a live show so you guys can express your opinions on this one. So we're going to leave it right there for now, my people. Big up.